Hey guys, Noel here, and it is uh, Saturday night, and we have a little bit of time on our hands. I thought it would be fun for us to do a live stream for the Noel Comics YouTube channel. Uh, family's asleep. Hopefully this is coming in. We're going through the screen sharing mode, so I've uh, got all my nifty nifty bezels here, so hopefully you're uh, hearing me okay. Uh, Sinister, how the hell are you doing, my friend? Uh, good to have you on. Uh, we have some Cosmic Fantasy Collection on the Switch going on in the background. And it has been a long time coming to have Cosmic Fantasy on the Switch because uh, I uh, was one of the people who had Cosmic Fantasy 2 on the uh, TurboGrafx CD. And I don't even have a TurboGrafx CD. I basically, uh, as a fan of Lunar and Working Designs, saw Cosmic Fantasy 2 mentioned in the making of Lunar uh, back in, I don't know, must have been like 2004. Um, and so I ordered it off of eBay. And uh, this was before there was like a huge demand for it. So, I mean, I got it like new in box, sealed at a reasonable price. And I actually had to download a emulator called Magic Engine, which let me play it. Uh, and there is a, a review of Cosmic Fantasy 2. Uh, we can hear you. I'm at work. I don't work Saturdays, but they'll call me sometimes. Uh, I'm around five and a half hours in. Well, hang in there, brother. Um, you know, just keep hanging and banging. Um, uh, Noel, would you call yourself an Instagram guy? Arrow, how the hell are you, man? Good to see you. Um, yeah, you're here, man. That's awesome. It's been too long since we've done a live stream. There's just been lots of just exhaustion and, uh, you know, family stuff. I mean, we did do a live stream with Santino probably last week, which was a lot of fun. Um, but, you know, we haven't gotten to do one of these, like, late night live streams where I get to just rant and rave until all hours of the night, you know. Um, so, uh, it's good that you're here, Arrow. Um, when I call myself an Instagram guy, I suppose, I like Instagram better than Facebook. I mean, I know they're owned by the same people. I remember there was that funny Seinfeld where Elaine was mad at this one store. And so she like was shopping at the other store and they were owned by the same lady, Gladys Mayo, <laughs> Puda Mayo or whatever it was. Um, you know, it's fine. I, I don't like Facebook at all. Um, you know, I was definitely a proponent of Facebook probably back in 2008, 2007, you know, when it was like just faster loading, boring looking MySpace with a little bit more of your friends on it. But uh, MySpace is, uh, was definitely better than Facebook and now the website is dead. So as you can see, you know, on the side screen right there, we got my friend project. And we also have my TikTok, which, you know, my TikTok uh, videos, the new ones I upload, they'll get like two to 700 views, you know, whereas on, you know, YouTube, which is my primary platform, you know, I just, the people who, you know, my, my, my inner circle will watch my videos. <laughs> and then if something like kind of clicks in Japan, you know, then it uh, gets some, gets some traction. Finished uh, last repairs. That you had to do on your PC, so now you're just relaxing for the night. Um, you know, I am uh, seriously considering getting a, uh, you know, kind of like a a uh, hundred dollar uh, PC tower that would be basically identical to the PC that I had when I was in college. I just want just like some VGA Dell tower that. I can hook up to my uh, Sony Trinitron over there and just be able to run my burned DVDs on and just some emulators and stuff, you know. Um, uh, I asked because I thought someone said something and when I clicked on it, I was taken to a status of mine and no such comment or notification exists. I'm wondering if I thought I, what it, I don't know, that's weird, man, I'm not sure. Um, you can probably find a cheap one off eBay. Well, you know, on, um, Amazon, they've got some cool ones that are like, uh, have like LED in the front, you know, and they're like about 120 bucks, you know, so I'm thinking maybe once, 
my taxes get paid and stuff you know maybe i can get one there but i mean i'm really i i really need to at some point get a playstation 5 um and i really plenty of dell acer hp desktops out there yeah i just i i need something other than my chromebook like i'm i have my chromebook right next to me that's what i'm reading the chat on and i can actually see you know the stream playing on there um i don't know it's just kind of like the one thing that's missing from my like tech life you know like in my room growing up you know when i was in college i always had a i had that that piece of shit dell desktop that i had kazaa on that you know i installed a capture card on and and i used to have like this like cheese box that had like a vga and an rca port and if i really wanted to i could play um the composite video on my dell monitor um i though i think these days there's a lot of small local custom pc places that are trying to expand and make business online yeah i mean you know i'm not opposed to getting something better necessarily i mean some of it's nostalgia but like you know whatever man you know like uh Honestly, I would like to be able to play Mujin. Like, that's kind of my thing. My coworkers love playing emulated games on tablets at work all the time. Um, yeah, that's true. Tablets are cool, for sure. Um, I had my old Android phone that I basically gave to Santino, and then he accidentally dropped it. Now the screen is cracked, but I had a bunch of games on that. Um, I do have some good games on this iPhone that... You know, I've been considering, you know, just doing a, a stream just where those are just cast, you know, like this is tech, I'm technically doing the screen share stream, um, but you know, uh, not playing my games on my phone. I'm just playing the, you know, the video and we're just hanging out in the game room. So, you know, it's all good. Uh, oh yeah, I've got my Venmo there too. So, you know. I know, like, uh, streamers tend to have those things on. Oh, you know what else? Uh, this came out a couple weeks ago. Pokimane, I guess, has left Twitch. And is now streaming on YouTube. So we've got some stiff, stiff competition here. You know, we got to make sure that we uh, are able to uh, siphon off some of those uh, Pokimane viewers. So, uh, yeah, I think we were actually talking about this last week. I was going to do a hot tub stream. But it's just too damn cold. It's like upstate New York. It's like, you know, 10 degrees outside. Um, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do a hot tub stream. No, no playing Pokemon and Final Fantasy at school as a teacher. Wow, I'll tell you, um, I have played Sonic at school as a teacher. Um, because, you know, I, sometimes I will catch kids playing it on their Chromebooks. And sometimes I'll just be like, yeah, just give it here, you know, and I'll just kind of see what I can do. Um, I do use video games a lot when I teach. There's, um, a website called GimKit. And I basically just program my, my like, I kind of, like, scaffold up my test questions. And, you know, you have to, like, answer my test questions to power up. There's a good game called Don't Look Down, which is, uh, like, a version of, I guess it's a, a, a tablet or mobile game called Only Way, like, One Way Up or Only Way Up or something like that. And that is pretty fun. The kids like to play that, play Capture the Flag, play, like, different, like, games. Like, the characters look like Among Us characters. There actually is an Among Us type game on on there. So I try to cycle GimKit into my lessons. Kids seem to like that better than Blook It, um, you know. But what I would really like... Oh, look, Noel has Spikes McGee on screen. <laughs> um, what? <laughs> what is Spikes McGee? Um, is that someone from Cosmic Fantasy back here? Uh... Anyway, um, what was I saying? Uh, the, uh, yeah, kid, there's another game called Blook It that is okay, but the kids seem to like GimKit better. And I'll usually play with them, but what I would really like is I would like, there's, you know, Santino likes to watch videos of Baldi's Basics, and I would like uh, to be able to play, like, get a Baldi's Basics made rather than have them do math questions, put my test questions in. Because the way I'll teach is I'll, 
you know, have the kids like watch a video, take notes on the video, and then I'll have some like stuff on the screen where we'll take notes from that. It's usually like kind of like open note question and answer. So their notes are them just like, I like I'll type questions and then I'll just put the answer to the question on the screen and you just gotta like type the answer in, and then I'll you know once you go through that process of watching the video, taking notes off the questions, you know taking the notes off a PowerPoint or taking the notes off of a assignment like a, a that you work on with your friend, like a digital handout or something, then those questions get plugged into the GIM kits and then those get compiled and become the test. Um, and then you, you take the test close note and, you know, if you do it fine, great. If you screw it up, then just cr keep correcting it until you get it right. And that's basically the way that I teach, uh, at least the seventh, I, that's how I teach seventh grade, you know, uh, which is all I've taught professionally. So on Twitter, someone posted Sonic and asked for wrong answers only. And <laughs> that was my response. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, yeah, Henry Gordon is actually the human... Uh, pre-incarnate of Sonic. It is uh, Chuck Yeager's uh, fictional rival. Uh, so yeah, uh, he uh, he died uh, trying to break the sound barrier and got reincarnated as Sonic. So that's that's the Japanese origin story of Sonic, which is uh, damn cool. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I like uh, I like to have my Sonic uh, my Sonic garnish on the screen right there. Um, so yeah, I don't know what we're gonna play tonight. I've I definitely some Cosmic Fantasy. I've got some SD Valis that I've been playing. I downloaded um, uh, a couple of PC eighty eight games on the Switch. Unfortunately, they did not translate the text from Japanese to English. So I got Ease on the PC eighty eight, which I was actually really excited to buy. And then once I like opened it up, all the text was still in Japanese, and it's like, dude, what the? F I mean, like that's fine, but. How do you, like, how difficult is it to patch English into that thing, you know? So, yeah, I've got a cool Majin Buu hat. Um, so my wife is really cool and got me a, uh, a gift card to GameStop. And uh, one of the things I got was this, like, Majin Buu snapback, which, uh, you know, I, I, I like how it looks. So uh, it's got a cool, uh, I like the... I just like all the booze on it, so. Um, looks like they got a cool uh, story going in the Dragon Ball Super manga. Beast Gohan is sparring with Ultra Instinct Goku and smashing up Beerus' planet, so that's pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, and uh, also we have the... Um, we have the uh, Commodore 64 1084S back in commission. Uh, I usually keep my Christmas tree up through... Uh, through the start of Lent, so Lent came early this year, so we uh, we put the Christmas tree back in the basement and put the uh, Commodore down here, which I have my Neo Geo Mini on, so. Um, my uh, favorite YouTuber, uh, Guy Jillionaire, also known as GTV Japan, he just did a review of a Cosmic Fantasy collection on the Switch, and uh, he was kind of critical of the uh, no frills dub, um, but I personally like the, I like the, I, I kind of like the the more accurate yet crude English dub of things with like English and things like that. I find it charming. Um, not that Victor Ireland's uh, spiritual dubs, spiritual analog dubs, aren't nice of the working designs variety. Um, Santino and I actually watched SmackDown last night. I, um, it was actually the first time I actually sat down and watched some WWE that wasn't a pay-per-view, and I was actually thoroughly impressed with the show. Um, you know, I watched AE, I watch AEW every week. Um, I'm not, like, prejudiced against watching WWE. It's just been, like, in the past, whenever I've tried to watch it, I just was, like, this, it was kind of meh or kind of boring, but... Um, you know, this was a really good one. Logan Paul, in my opinion, is the, the best wrestler they've got on their roster. I don't care what anyone says. He's a natural. He's charismatic. He's got uh, some actual knowledge of how to fight. I mean, obviously, he's not like a great prize fighter, but even just as a YouTube boxer, he knows he knows some elements of some serious elements of boxing um, that he's able to 
pepper into his professional wrestling repertoire. Um, he's a natural athlete and a natural performer, and he's charismatic. Uh, so he's excellent. Uh, so he had a really good match with The Miz. Um, you know, Tiffany Stratton, she's, she's hot, but she, like, I like, um, what's her name, Maria May better in AEW. Tony Storm is the best, uh, women's wrestler going right now easily. I mean, she's hilarious, but I thought Tiffany Stratton, uh, she was cool. Um, and then the best thing about, uh, SmackDown was the, the heel rock promo. Uh, he was great. Um, it was good to, to uh, to hear the rock. Uh, revisit his uh, his heel persona. Uh, I mean, obviously, WWE, I'm assuming, is not going to want their heel getting cheered that much, but uh, it's just really funny, man. Like, his, uh, the you know, his comments of, like, you know, you people, uh, you, you broke an indoor attendance record of being the biggest collection of dumbasses ever. <laughs> Had a story... You can tell your 50 wives and your inbred grandchildren, <laughs> you know, just like stuff like that. It was, it was, it was very good. It was very good. So, uh, you know, um, I, I said this before and I'll say it again. Uh, the best thing possible for Cody Rhodes was, was losing it at WrestleMania last year because he was getting booed in AEW because he was pushing himself inorganically as a baby face. Um, and they were doing it the same in WWE. They were, they were rushing it. And, uh, now that he's lost, he's got, you know, sympathy and, um, you know, so Roman is just going to sit there, take a backseat to the rock. He should, um, they could be co-leaders, you know, kind of like a Hogan Nash and the Wolf Pack type thing. Even though I always kind of considered Nash the leader of the Wolf Pack, but Hulk the champion. Um, I mean the obvious storytelling and i don't think this should happen because i think the rock is just better as a bad guy you know i think roman should be the champ like hogan and rock be the the talker and you know kind of like the godfather um that would, i think that would make a lot of sense but i think what they're probably gonna do is like a tyson dx type storyline you know but that would, I think, hurt Cody because then the idea would be he would need The Rock to win, you know, and not just do it on his own. Um, although the balance to that would be that Roman Reigns has the whole bloodline. So, you know, Cody would have The Rock to try to balance that out. But again, that still doesn't make a whole ton of sense because, you know, why would The Rock turn against his family member for Cody Rhodes, who he doesn't know at all, you know? Uh, Rock and Owen were co-leaders of the nation. I really, I never considered Owen a leader of the nation. I just thought Owen was kind of like a cool wild card. Um, Owen was great in the nation. Well, enough is enough, and it's time for a change. Um, but, uh, yeah. Um, honestly, I mean, I don't, this was the first time I've, I've ever really, you know, watched uh, Roman Reigns in a non-pay-per-view capacity um, I mean, I think it definitely took him a while to really hit his stride. I mean, they were, they were inorganically pushing him as a baby face and that was a disaster. And then I think it probably took him about a good year to year and a half to get really comfortable and good and in a, in a rhythm as that heel Roman Reigns. Cause you know, I remember everyone saying like how cool he was and then I'd see him on pay-per-views at friends' houses and I'm like, yeah, he's okay. And then, but then, like, I saw his match with Cody last year, and I was like, yeah, he's he's good. He's he's definitely good. Um, but the one thing I don't really understand about Roman Reigns is, uh, you know, that whole, like, acknowledge me thing. Like, like you're supposed to be, a, you're supposed to be, like, a guy who thinks he's, like, the shit, you know? Like, why are you asking people for approval, you know? So, like, I don't know. I mean, I, I get it. It's like, you know, worship me or something like that. But acknowledge, he should say worship me instead of acknowledge me. Because acknowledge me is just like, pay attention to me, you know. Like, uh, I don't know. Um, yeah. So Brock Lesnar, I mean, he's uh, he's gone because of his, uh, you know, being intertwined in Vince McMahon's uh, brown shower orgies. Um, so, you know. <laughs> The thing about that that's so ridiculous is that, like, everyone know like, I, th anyone who acts like people are shocked about this is, is stupid, and anyone who acts like Triple H didn't know about this 
is are, are so ridiculously dishonest. They just want Triple H around because they like the way that he books and they have a brand bias and they think that Triple H is good for WWE. So they want to keep him booking so that they can get their rocks off to his style of wrestling. And if you're going to be all like holier than thou or whatever, then, you know, and you want a really clean house, like Triple H's whole, like, his whole real life and and caricature persona is someone who plays the game and is will just say whatever and do whatever he needs to do to be in a position of power and there's no possible way that he did not know that his father-in-law was doing this kind of stuff which by the way is like you know i'm not saying it's good and but like at the same time i mean this the the woman who's in the nda i mean to a certain extent she's a willing participant in this stuff she's a grown woman it's not like she's a 12 year old you know um you know so it's like she's like 40 years old and she's going through with this stuff and it's like well, well he's gonna fire me and i'll lose my money like i'm sorry like you don't have to prostitute yourself for money you know um that now that again it's not like excuse vince mcmahon at all but i'm kind of tired of you know this idea that women are like simultaneously like you know victims and goddesses at the same time because you can't be both you know and if you don't want vince mcmahon to shit on your head move out of the way you know um if you don't want to like humiliate yourself don't like piss and then like like piss for brock lesnar in a text message you know so like um like again, I'm I'm not saying that Vince McMahon was right to do these things, but the idea that these women were just like brainwashed by Vince McMahon is like the stupidest shit I've ever heard. Um, and I'm not like victim blaming. I'm just like this is just analysis, you know. <laughs> like, um, you know, so like, and and there's all this stuff. It's like, oh well, you know, he he was like punishing divas if they didn't like make out with him. It's like, yeah, yeah, I know, it's not good. <laughs> and again, like this is this is not news you know um so i mean i guess like you know but uh, like wwe i mean the way he ran wwe was whether you were a woman or a man you know would just break your brain because of of the of the grueling schedule it was just the the bad part about being a woman was you know and pat patterson would do this with men too you know it's like how bad do you want to get ahead you know are you willing to sell your body or compromise your, your 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 sexual dignity to to promote your career you know i mean i i would hear psycho sid tell stories about guys who would come to him about like pat patterson like propositioning them and be like well i, I don't know about all this and, and psycho sid's like listen you're never going to be as over as me don't don't bang a guy go back to your girlfriend you know so sorry if i'm being crude late at night but it is what it is so um so in conclusion, uh, yeah, Vince McMahon uh, de definitely abused his power. Uh, he had total control of the company, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Um, and he was—he's definitely someone without a moral compass, at least in terms of the Judeo-Christian variety. I do think he's got some—he's got some kind of an honor code, you know. Like he will take care of people who he respects. Um, and he will li literally and figuratively shit on you if he doesn't respect you. Um, and, and that, I mean, and, and that would get acted out on camera. I mean, they would just literally dump shit on people that they didn't like, you know, they did it to Sonny. Um, so, you know, it's late at night. The kids should be asleep anyway. <laughs> Don't worry. Arrow, you're awesome, man. I, uh, I really enjoy your commentary. You know, Arrow, you were the first person to ever comment on my live streams. So, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, AEW is, uh, is still my, uh, my brand of choice, but, uh, I gotta tell you, I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that SmackDown. That was the best WWE, uh, television I've seen in a while, and it's WrestleMania season, so they're definitely putting their best foot forward, but, you know, if they were to do more things like that, I think I could see myself getting back to, a, like, how I was in the early 2000s, where I would watch TNA, like TNA better, but also watch WWE and appreciate what I liked about the product, you know. Raw's just too damn long, though. I can't sit through three hours of wrestling. It's just, like, it's not... Dude, it's like, I don't have time, and I'm just... It, and it's not that good, you know. Like, Nitro was that good. Like, when... I, I mean, I remember 
when uh, my best friend and I, you know, in like 1997, 98, you know, we'd sit there on the phone for like three hours and just watch Nitro. And when like and when the two hours was up and Tony Schiavone would be screaming like, we're out of time. If we only had more time, you know, and we were all like, I wish I had more time, you know. And then they added that third hour of Nitro, which was good. It was like I was legitimately happy watching it, you know. Um, although, you know, I think WCW just got to a point where, uh, you know, they're they had too much television and not enough booking skills, you know, Um so I don't know. Although Eric Bisch Eric Bischoff is a is is a grand master at, at literature, you know, as we all know, as you know, when he yelled at me on his podcast. So um, he's like, "Look, I never claimed to be a literary expert, but uh, I study it deeply and apply it to my magnum opus." Scott Baio was forty five and pregnant, you know, uh, <laughs> that and the NWO right there. So anyway, I don't know, but uh, so listen, I mean, I again, I. I just, I want, to, as far as all this Vince McMahon bullshit goes, you know, um, you know, there, you're not going to be able to cancel Vince McMahon because he, he poured his soul into the WWE. Like, is, is does he have a side where he's a, uh, a, a sleazy, exploitative, um, amoral, immoral asshole? Yes. And that persona was caricaturized and people loved it, you know? Um, but you know, that was based on reality too, and that's not good. Uh, so if he gets his comeuppance, I'm not going to shed a tear. I don't care. Um, but at the same time, you know, someone who studies history and you have to look at the positives and negatives of what people contribute, I, I think it's stupid to try to pretend that, you know, Vince McMahon never existed, um, or that his positive contributions are, are somehow like he should be ignored, um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, if, uh, if, if he ends up getting his comeuppance and I know that, um, what's her name? Ashley, I said Ashley Montero or something like that. You know, she was kind of like the playboy bunny Avril Lavigne. I think she was like Paul London's girlfriend. I know she ended up having like mental problems and, uh, she ended up, I don't know if she killed herself if she, or she OD'd, but I'm sure it was all, you know, I, I'm sure her mental stress from WWE couple you know a coupled with like the sexual harassment and the and the just the just not being happy um i'm sh and just whatever previous habits she had before that i'm sure that all kind of compounded in her end which is not great uh to put it mildly and uh, tragically uh like all the stuff you and sinister have been talking about i know nothing since i never got into wrestling but i like listening to someone passionate about whatever uh, proud to say I've been here for a while, came for the retro games and old anime, and the related subcultures and fan bases, now I'm just here for the ride. Well, thank you very much, and I do love me some retro uh, games and old anime. I've been actually really, uh, I, I want to do some more anime reviews. Um, I re-uploaded my Cypher review. Um, I lightened it up because um, I... Uh, was watching it and I was just like, you, you could barely see me because the light was getting all skewed from the camera. Um, so I don't know. I Sometimes I'll like, I'll upload, I'll re-upload videos just to try to make them more aesthetically pleasing. But it's a fine balance of trying to make the video be as best as it can be. And, you know, you don't want to burn viewers out with, you know, content, but uh, that they don't value. But at the same time, like if they've already seen it, but at the same time, there is also something to be said about reruns, you know. So, like, for example, like, um, one of my favorite YouTube channels is uh, Basement Brothers. And, uh, you know, I, I must have watched their review of, of Soft Studio Wings Mirrors about, like, I don't know, 20 times in the last three days. <laughs> uh, I wish they'd do an English dub of that. Um, it's a horror visual novel for... Japanese PCs about Depeche Mode. So, yeah. Uh, well, it, I mean, it's like a band very heavily based on Depeche Mode, whose lead singer is the reincarnation of a demon king, and he's having violent nightmares. Um, and uh, his manager is part of some cult trying to awaken him or something like that. Um, and it's all just done in this, like you know, Jap is like PC-88 aesthetic, you know, uh, from this 
uh, mom and pop video game company. So, uh, yeah, uh, so I've, I've watched that, uh, you know, quite a bit just because I, I like the vibe that you're talking about with like the retro games and the, um, I don't know, just the, the, the cadence of the, of the Basement Brothers hosts are, is very relaxing. Like a lot of time I'll fall asleep on the couch to them. So, you know. Well, speaking of retro games, uh, I have been playing some Cosmic Fantasy uh, and some SD Valis uh, on the Switch. So, um, you know, uh, I don't, I, I mean, I don't know what else to do but by putting a bow on the WWE stuff other than um, all they can do is just move forward and put out quality. And if you end up getting your comeuppance from your past behavior, uh, you know, that is what it is. But I also don't have a ton of patience for... Like, I mean, listen, if a pro wrestler was abused and they're now just getting the courage to speak out, you know, more power to you, you know, you know, you got nothing but respect and, you know, if, and if people are talking down to you or whatever, screw them. Um, however, if you're someone who was like playing the game and now you're using your like c conniving carny ways to try to like, you know, somehow profit off this new turn of events, you know. Uh, like John Laurinaitis saying, like, well, well, you know, I, I was a victim too, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, you're, you're an idiot, you know, um, or someone who was, like, actively participating, like, someone who's actively participating in this culture, and now all of a sudden they're just acting like, oh, well, I'm, 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 I'm appalled, you know, like, just, like, it, I, I find that to be really sleazy and stupid, um, but anywho, ha. Huh? Uh, AEW, uh, that's, it's still my favorite programming. It's, uh, it's more organic. Wrestling's, uh, richer. It's got that WCW vibe that I like so much. I was actually watching, um, uh, NWO Saturday Night, uh, with Santino on the couch earlier tonight. Uh, that was really good. Uh, they'd have these, uh, empty arenas and they'd be, like, filmed black and white on a camcorder and it was this segment on WCW Saturday Night. Uh, where, like, the NWO would have these squash matches against these, like, comedically presented jobbers. And, uh, and Nick Patrick was this, like, referee in a ski mask. It was great. So, well, anyway, let's play some Cosmic Fantasy. Uh, let's play some Cosmic Fantasy 1. I'm working on, th I'm working through that, doing a little leveling. Um, let me play some SD Valis, and then we'll do some stuff on, I don't know what else. Uh, so we'll just kind of see where it leads. So, uh, all right, let's get down to it, people. One really cool thing about the Cosmic Fantasy Collection is um, that you have the Japanese music on it now, which is super cool. I'm going to put my... Uh, computer on my Pac-Man arcade cabinet so I can see the chat here. Oh, I love this artwork here. Okay, let's get into some business here. Let's turn it up a little bit here. I'm uh, hoping that uh, the Cosmic Fantasy 3 collection, or sorry, the Cosmic Fantasy Collection 2, the one with, uh, I know I'm adjusting the camera here, the one with Cosmic Fantasy 3 comes out, because that uh, would be really cool. Because um, that's never been released in English. There's only been one Cosmic Fantasy released in English, so. And that's two. Yeah, this is, uh, the Cosmic Fantasy is great. It's like, uh, Dragon Quest if it was an 80s sci-fi anime. John, how you doing, brother?
Um, I said it in my review for Cosmic Fantasy 2. Uh, a lot of those elements were used in, in uh, Cosmic Fantasy... Sorry, in Final Fantasy 7. All, all these fantasies. Cosmic Fantasy, Fantasy Star, Final Fantasy... <laughs> yeah, Cosmic Fantasy uh, th four. Yeah, I think Cosmic Fantasy four is the one that's got the sequel story to two. Uh, again, uh, GTV, Guy Jillionaire, has got great videos on Cosmic Fantasy, so check him out. In 1070, known in some circles as uh, Bryant Yard. Uh, how you doing, my friend? Playing some Cosmic Fantasy 1 here. Alright. Merchant Town, Takal is to the south of here. Okay. That's good to know. I like these old RPGs where they just, like, tell you what's going on. <laughs> like, go here. Yes, sir. <laughs> here the other day, there's a pandemic spreading through Takal. Seems they're in trouble. Well, that's not good. Uh, I think I've already got a broadsword. I think I'm good. Thank you. Come again. This guy looks like uh, he's full of wisdom. Anything interesting going on in here? You're watching Spawn, the uh, HBO cartoon or the John Leguizamo movie? Uh, I'll probably buy some herbs here. I think I'm good. By a couple. My inventory's pretty full. Ooh, smooth tunes here. This game, had, the Cosmic Fantasy games had just really good graphics, too. And the, uh... Cutscenes were great as well. Okay, so I just rescued this family's dad here. Alright, so I'm supposed to go to the south here. I'm assuming. So I'll go there. I'm still underage. Nah, I don't know what the drinking age is in here. I mean, I don't know how... You're watching the HBO cartoon. Ah, very cool, very cool. I like to listen to interviews with Todd McFarlane. Especially when he's hanging out with Rob Leefield. Those are always good. And there's an auto on here, so... That tends to speed the battles up a bit. Now, I think there's an issue where I go in here. Uh, my apologies, without a permit from the king, you can't pass. Uh, permit from the king. Uh, where's the king? Your guys is king, or is there another king? Do I have any items here? There's healing herbs, which will help me, but not with you, huh? Uh, alright, so I'll have to leave. Hmm. Well, in the meantime, we'll just level up here. I love the soundtrack to this game.
Like seriously, cosmic fantasy games are just they're so accessible and pretty. There's my ship. Instead of slimes, they have like pink tofu cubes or something. <laughs> Can't go down there, so. Uh, is there anything interesting in this village here that I've already been to? Uh, talking to this little guy. No, I don't need anything. I need the King's Pass, is what I need. <laughs> There's a bard with juicy information. Uh, nothing there. We don't want to get, like, overly stuck here, but... Try doing a couple more things. I'm kind of stuck on SD Valis, too. I'm at this one boss, and I'm shooting everything I got at him, and uh, it's not quite, not quite enough. By not quite enough, I mean it's not doing any damage. <laughs> I think I'm, like, probably getting close-ish to the end of that game. People say they don't like that game that much. I think it's a lot of fun. I don't know what the people are bitching about. I guess it's not as dramatic as the other ones, but it's like an SD game. It's supposed to be cute and expressive. Ooh, we have seven people watching. Three more and we're in double digits. Call your friends. Call your family. Call grandma. Tell her to fire up the old PC. Do 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 do. Uh, do, 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 do. Now we're gonna have to go back through this forest here. That's all there is to it. And if memory serves me right, I came through this cave here. Mm hmm. Sounds like this. I wish I had a walkthrough, but uh, I don't. <laughs> All I can do is get lost and level up, which, uh, that, that works, you know. That's how I get my level gets so high in Final Fantasy games. <laughs> it's just, like, just no idea where the hell I'm going. Man, that fanfare music they have in this game is just really good. Oh, I can ride him? That's cool. Well, that's the town I was literally just in. There's only two towns I've been to. So where's this King's Pass that I need here? Hmm. Oh, 
all I can do is try to talk to every townsperson here. Nothing of note in this well. Yeah, I already talked to this guy. I do like it that my uh, anthropomorphic tanuki motorcycle can help me uh, get places in a hurry. Yeah, this game's very user-friendly. Yeah, there's nothing I can... I've been everywhere here. Yeah, everyone's talking about this Tikal place, but I'm pretty sure that's that town that that uh, guy is blocking off. Do, do, do. Maybe if I sleep at the end, that'll help. <laughs> I'll sleep on this here. Well, my data is saved, so that's good. Do, 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 do. This is literally the only place that's down here. This map does me literally no good. It's a giant map. What am I supposed to do with this here? It's like some somebody like took the effort to make a map and then put nothing. <laughs> I mean, I just saved my game, so I think I'm going to have to take a break from this one now. I did just download this game uh, earlier today here. I wonder if it's going to have to do an update or something here. Nope, it's going here. This, I believe, is a cool anime fighter. So, Phantom Breaker uh, Om Omnia. I don't know why Santino made all these, like, weird accounts on here. <laughs> ah, Rocket Panda Games. I have no idea who you are. But it looks like you make a good game nonetheless. This game just looked cool in the eShop, so it's just like, yeah, sure. Well, J-pop opening and anime graphics. Well, that's a plus for me. Uh, 
I'm uh, seriously uh, considering uh, either after the stream or tomorrow doing a reaction video to the uh, X-Men 97 uh, trailer, which, uh, I don't know. There's things about it that look really cool, and then things about it that look a little odd. You know, a lot of fans are, I think, rightfully complaining about how they've kind of nerfed Rogue's sexy figure. Because, you know, the male gaze is a force of evil, apparently. Um, and, uh, you know, just kind of being political for the sake of being political. Where you're, like, making, like, special note that Morph is non-binary. Like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> like, what? Morph? Who's non-binary? <laughs> Um, uh, like, there's zero evidence of that in the show at all, uh, uh, you know, so, and, I don't know, like, and people are going to oh, X-Men's always been political, X-Men was political as a Cold War allegory, that was the overt politics there, um, now, it is true that X-Men is always been about, you know, justice for the alienated or anything like that, but, at the same time, it's like, um, like when you force things it doesn't work it doesn't do anyone any favors you know and, and like just trying to retcon characters to fit into your politics is i think uh not great oh voice language is japanese game i want input lag i don't want any input lag <laughs> easy this is a regular easy round count one uh okay again like i mean i i'm in fa I'm in favor of all human beings treated with dignity. I just think that, you know, like identity politics characters that are designed to generate, uh, you know, discussion or whatever is, especially when it's, it's out of character for the person, you know, this is a little hard to see who my character is here. <laughs> Ah, uh, this girl looks cool. Again, I didn't... I actually... Uh... I didn't mean to pick her, but whatever. This looks like it's got, uh... Pretty, uh... You know, pretty nice emphasis on uh, some story elements uh, sprinkled into the uh, fighting madness here. <sighs> you know, anime is like, you know, that that's a genre that has, you know, just a lot of, quote-unquote, identity politics in it, but it's done with it's kind of it's almost like apolitical it's like it's not preachy it's just like by the way this character has got this thing that we would consider a novel eccentricity you know um so i don't know, whatever Well, apparently I'm a uh, bad guy. Well, let's see how this bad boy plays. I like the graphics. Trying to figure out the battle system here. I think 
Prince is probably going to be more of a, like, uh, Ford. I think this is going to have more of a Tekken style than a Street Fighter style from what I'm messing around with. I think it's more of a Tekken Samurai Showdown than a Street Fighter King of Fighters. Got some range there. There we go. It does look like Guilty Gear. I like the graphics for sure. All right, good times. This guy is tougher than the last one, unfortunately. I think my special move is just one of the shoulder buttons here. This is like kind of this is like a little bit more of a combo based. Uh, it, it's it, again, it's it's more Tekken style combos than Street Fighter, which is. Ah, he got me. Ah, uh, this is a good game. And uh, I didn't pay that much money for it because it was on sale, too. Actually, I saw this game in the eShop. I hearted it because I was waiting for me uh, to get paid. And, uh... You know, luckily enough, I, uh, and then I went to go pick it up. I found out that it was on sale. So far, so good. There we go. That's much better. This cute, well-intentioned maid and this eye-patched sociopath. I, uh... 
I'm not uh, as peppy as I uh, have been in previous live streams, though, so I don't know how late I'm going to be able to take this one. I am on uh, break, though, so that's I got. I do got to get up for church tomorrow. But I don't have school this whole week, so technically I could go live at any time, you know. If the kids go to sleep early or, you know, whatever. I'm sure Santino and I'll do some, do some streaming. Definitely some game reviews. Uh, I, we are going to do... Uh, the, the plan is to do another episode of The Knoll Show uh, as well over break. So stay tuned for that. That's not good for anyone. Gives me a little bit of a uh, variable geo vibe here. Especially I want to beat this game. I'm feeling myself getting a little tired, so I think I'm gonna do this fight and then I'm gonna grab a snack. Well, I like the music in this level here. Just out of range. God damn it. This perky pop star is kicking my ass here. <laughs> ah, come on. Desperation move, it worked out. Less talk, more bleeding. Oh, 
Okay. Well, let me, uh... Probably pause. Yeah, I'm gonna pause this here. Okay. Um, let's uh, let's take a little bit, little bit of a break. Go to the kitchen and grab a snack. And uh, you know, I don't know. Probably uh, play a little SD Valis. Maybe check out some VHS tapes. Do do do. What the hell do we have to eat here? Um, <laughs> I only got a plate full of old french fries. That's probably good slumber party food. It's uh, Lent, so uh, got Doug's fish fry on uh, Friday. Here are the leftover fries. So, I don't know. Here's that. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Usually the chat likes it when I feed them. So, uh, so there you go. Num, num, num. Num, 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 num. All right. So, um, yeah. I don't know. I'm, uh... Still watching uh, One Life to Live from the uh, late 80s and early 90s during uh, just random breaks in the day. Mm-hmm. Cord just got electrocuted, which is ironic because his name is Cord, you know. So a guy named Cord gets electrocuted, even though electricity runs through Cord. It's a... No, 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 it runs through Cord, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Um, hmm, what else? Oh, yeah, the 1987 episode I'm watching. Like, this lady who was um, in a mental institution saw that her doctor kills someone, and now the doctor's going to say that she's crazy. The plot thickens. Mm-hmm. These fries need some ketchup. So let's go get some. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ah, ketchup. All right, let's um set the phone down here. Hold on. Okay. Pull up a chair. Have a little chat. I'll eat some fries. Alright. Electrocuted in a soap opera. Yeah, I know. It's like, what a way to go. Uh, he'll come back, though. So. Used to watch General Hospital. Yeah. Um, so, like... I would, um, when I was little, like in the 80s, my mom would watch All My Children, she watched watch Loving All My Children, One Life to Live in General Hospital. And then when she went to college, when I was in like third grade, I was home alone all summer. And so I used to watch All My Children, One Life to Live in General Hospital. Um, so I remember General Hospital. Um, you know. It was cool, but, like, I always remember, like, One Life to Live was the best, in my opinion, so, but, I, it stopped being as good once I got rid of the good opening. That had, like, an awesome, like, anime-style opening. It used to have these, like, giant, like, yellow monochrome, like, faces of the characters superimposed over the screen of this, like, landscape of Philadelphia. Wow. Cool poppy 80s music played. It was good stuff. Pia Boo Bronson, like, seeing the theme. One Life to Live used to play a lot of good 80s music. Like, I was watching an episode the other day 
They're playing Vanilla Ices. I need, uh, sorry, Vanilla Ices, I Love You. I Need Love was a little cool, Jay. I, I Love You is better than I Need Love. I don't care what anyone says. Mm-hmm. I remember that Rick Springfield was on General Hospital. And Rick Springfield's... <coughs> he's, he's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I've been lucky enough to, um, exchange some social media messages with, um, Karen Ritter, who was the second Tina. I would compare LL Cool J, that to LL Cool J's I Need Love. Yeah, they're both good. I need love is a good song, but I don't know. I like I like um, I love you. It's got a saxophone solo. The music video is really cool. You saw him at Del Lago two months ago. LL Cool J or um, Vanilla Ice. Either one would be awesome. It says Adam Morgan, welcome, my friend. I have, um, two vanilla ice tapes. I have, um, I have two of the extreme and the cool as ice soundtrack and they're both great. Rick Springfield. That's, I didn't know he was, um, the Lago. Is that, that's, in, that's around Syracuse, right? I listened to Rick Springfield on... Ooh, he was with Richard Marks. Nice. Um, I, um... I listened to Rick Springfield's show on the 80s on 8 on Sirius XM all the time. He's always got some, like, theme, you know, like, uh... I mean, the crazy thing about Rick Springfield is, like, I didn't realize he was Australian. Waterloo. Interesting. Um... I didn't realize that uh, he was Australian, and um, but you, like he's got a he's very good at talking in an American accent. But like every once in a while on his show, just to be funny, he'll bust out this Australian accent. I'm like, what? What the hell? <laughs> you know? So, um, yeah, Rick Springfield's awesome. It would be even more awesome is if he went on tour with Vanilla Ice. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're almost done with this plate of french fries here. And that we're eating so we can stay awake. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, I was just telling my wife... I've never been to a concert that I wanted to go to. Like, I've never seen, like, oh, this musician I like is playing. I should go see them. And it's always been, like, you know, the old-timers band is playing at the Cortland DAV. Go see them. <laughs> like, oh, uh, okay. Are you, am I going to Lego Fest in Syracuse? I did not know there was a Lego Fest in Syracuse. I don't really like Legos, but Santino loves them. Um, I'm not good at... Um, I'm not good at, like, working in three dimensions. I'm good at drawing. But, like, uh, I don't know. I've never been um, as big into, like, crafts, but... Santino makes really cool stuff with Legos. Yeah, he'll just like, just kind of space out and build, and it's a lot of fun.
All right. When is Lego Fest? It might be a cool thing to take them to, if possible. <laughs> I've been to Lego Land twice, so. You know, it's cool. Now that we have the, um, like, the frame on the screen, you can see, like, my face next to, like, you know, Ava Avatar Knoll's face. It could be that way, right? So, uh, yeah, so. <laughs> good times, good times. Well, we have this, uh, ooh, April 20th, all right, 420. There we go, there we go. Um, I'm not a, I'm not a smoker, uh, but uh, I do have this half-eaten bag of Cheez-Its here that either Santino or Serafina left behind, so, um, we'll snack on that. I hear Rob Van Dam is, uh, gonna be wrestling for AEW on uh, April 20th. <coughs> right on, right on. That's Hitler's birthday, by the way. So Hitler was born on Marijuana Day. Mm-hmm. This, like, Cheez-Its Czech mix, Czech mix is, um, it's good. It's like... Everything you love about Chex Mix, but with Cheez-Its. Mm-hmm. All right, well. It's going to be about time that we um, return to the game room. Mm-hmm. All right. weed is illegal in Germany. And so is Nazism. So there you go. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Why don't we play some um, SD Valis here? Coming straight from the heart of Vanilla ICE. <laughs> Now that I got paid, um, probably buy some more Valis games. They got a bunch of them on here. Yeah, I'll lower this a little bit. I don't know where to hit him. Because, like, everything I'm shooting goes, like, right through him here. See, it's like no damage is being done, and I'm like, I, I am hitting him, but, like, he's not taking any damage here. I, on the other hand, am. <laughs>
Yeah, see, I mean, I don't really know what to do here. I'm going to reload that here. Yeah, I'm hitting this guy. I don't know what else to do here. This is another job for a walkthrough here, which, again, I can't really access right now. <laughs> yeah, dead again. Should uh, adjust that a little bit more there. Magus is our great leader. Can't use that bomb on him. I am hitting him. I just don't know what else to do here. Unless, like, do I need to, like, change my shot here? Uh, how about this one here? I don't think it's going to work, though. Anyone got any ideas? <laughs> uh, I don't know how to do damage to this guy. All enemies of Magus must die. I love the Basement Brothers review of uh, Valus 2 on the um, PC-88. And when, uh, like, Rugal's guys the guy from the bad guy from the last game he's like he really cared about us he was a great guy once you get to know him. <laughs> he's got like a framed picture of him <laughs> yeah. oh there it goes Okay, I'm finally doing some damage here, but, like, the ratio of me taking damage to him, like, not... You know, I'm taking way more damage. Okay, so I think I gotta try to dodge... Alright, let's see what we got here. How can I dodge him? Okay. Ah, oh, darn, I can't figure out the pattern. Well, see, at least I figured out how to do damage on him now, but, like, I don't know. Um, I don't know how to... I gotta figure out how to not take damage here. All right. Okay. <laughs> defense powers 10. This has got a weaker defense power, but the attack power is really good here, so... Whoa. 
I'm going to need the stronger attack power. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe rather than trying to dodge it, I can just shoot through him. Well, that didn't work either. <laughs> I really like the graphics on this game. This is a uh, quality Mega Drive stuff here. Apparently, I can't really shoot through anything here, dude. I can't dodge it. Or I'm gonna have to like after this live stream just like try to fall asleep to a video of someone actually beating this guy. <laughs> yeah, because like the best I can do is like just like Well, I can just duck, duck that, so that's good. All right, let's try this again here. I'm saved right by here, so... Even if I die, even if I get a game over, you know? Apparently he's like super vulnerable when he's flashing. All right, I'm gonna load here because I think I've, I'm kind of figuring this out a little bit here. Thank God for save states. This has got a 20 defensive power here. And this has got a... Hmm, which dress should I use? Maybe I'll try this one here. Give me a stronger defense here, at least. Oh, well, that was even worse. You really do need the better offensive power here. What is the pattern to dodge these things? Damn it, man. 
Sorry if uh, you guys are getting burned out watching me just lose to this guy repeatedly. I wonder if this outfit will help at all. Oh, maybe the speed, this speed thing will help. Actually, that made it worse. This really does seem to be the best option here. I think my best option is to try to shoot at him. I still isn't doing it. I think it was a few more. I'll just, um, I'll see if I can beat him on this, like, range of lives here, but, like, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. Yeah, it's definitely not going to do it. That just like spamming the hit and getting next to him. At least they got it down, but like. Ratio is still too big. Well, if we don't beat him on this one, we're just going to give up for now. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna like, hmm. I'm gonna save here. Because my ratio to his is not too bad here. So even if I like lose here, you know, at least I'll have like. <laughs> I can try to pick up the fight where it's like we're not like totally super. At a discrepancy here. Yeah, game over. Well, I don't know, man. I, I don't know what else to do. Well, we're um, almost at one o'clock in the morning here, so uh, why don't we, before we retire for the night, uh, take a look at some. Uh, let's see what's in the VCR here. <laughs> Okay. You said weed is legal in Germany. I thought you said it was illegal. Okay. 
So. <laughs> Turn that TV on here. And go to the skirt cable. And all right, what do we got? Is this I am at Suda? Watching something taped off of YouTube on a VHS tape from 2007. Yeah, I told you guys, like back in the day, I was afraid YouTube was going to go the way of Napster, so I uh, just I, I would like tape YouTube on VHS, which actually is a good idea, you know, to you always want to have physical copies of things. Especially VHS tapes, you know, because those are, uh, those are, um, you know, uh, a medium that is, like, not being targeted, really. <laughs> Ooh, pull a bit, boys. So my, uh, my good friend Edo, he, uh, he likes pool bit boys. As do I, Daisuke Asakura's uh, duo right here. I'm making backups close to two decades ago. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, brother. I'm timeless, man. I walk through all decades with a VHS tape in hand. Man, Daisuke Asakura was so good at producing music. He just had this, like, really good, like, light, airy, intense sound, you know? good how uh, Japanese audiences would always like, you know, clap in unison. You'd really see the, uh, you know, collective harmony there. 
as opposed to how Americans are at concerts, we're all just having our own unique form of seizure. Both are good in their own ways. Good stuff. Hopefully, doing it, we don't get in trouble for uh, showing this. But uh, I mean, come on. This is an uh, accident by Pool Bit Boys. A oh, Venus accident. Venus accident. Check it out. Where's Puffy Yami Yumi in concert? That is a good question. I don't know if I have much Puffy uh, taped. I mean, I like them, but I didn't tape a, a lot of them. They kind of had a style I wasn't as into. I mean, again, I do like them. And uh, was Ami the one that was married to Team Revolution? Um, one of my best videos on YouTube in terms of the traffic that it gets is uh, the um, black or white from Des Gassacor's Electromancer before he started calling himself Team Revolution. So it's uh, Des Gassacor, Expand, Takanori Nishikawa, black or white. And uh, that is, uh, that might be my favorite J pop song. That's such a great song. Oh. I guess yes, Akora must have liked the uh, Venus, you know, it's Team Revolution had a song called The Venus, which is a great song. Yeah, Puffy, uh, you know, I remember when they, uh, they had a, I'm gonna say they had a float in the St. Anthony, they have a, I don't know if they had a float in the St. Anthony's, not St. Anthony's, uh, it's late, St., it's, it's not St., I always think St. Anthony's Parade, because I'm by St. Anthony's Church, um, uh, the Thanksgiving Day Parade, yeah, Sailor Venus, yeah, Sailor Venus, she was awesome, you know, I'm not, uh, I don't really like Taylor Swift. I don't hate Taylor Swift. I'm kind of indifferent toward her. I do like this whole kind of cartoony spectacle about her. Um, but I, I saw in in the NFL, I think it's fun. It, it reminds me of like something out of an anime. Like, here's a football player. He's dating a pop star. This should be the closing credits of the anime, what we're hearing right now. Anyway, like, uh, someone had made like a Sailor Moon. Yeah, she's waifu material for sure. Um, someone made a, like, a Sailor Moon Taylor Swift, like, t-shirt or something, and, uh, like, if I were to ever wear a Taylor Swift thing, it would probably be that. That would look pretty badass. I mean, it was done in anime style, too, so it, was, it wasn't, like, just a picture of her. It was, like, someone made a good anime caricature of her and dressed her up like Sailor Moon. What do we got here? Ooh, Voltron. I wonder if we'll get in trouble for showing Go Lion. I 
have a Voltron uh, upstairs in uh, my bedroom. It's like, I sleep in a big bed with my wife and my Voltron. <laughs> go, 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 la, e, yo. This is a really pretty song. Did I replay this one? Yes, I did. I always used to do that. Like, rather than... This way I wouldn't have to rewind it. I just, like, play the same thing repeatedly. <laughs> Here's Team Revolution. This is probably on Pop Jam. I used to host that show. The music video for this had like all of his music videos like mashed together. <laughs> yes, 2008 is considered new for me. <laughs> Having this on a tape makes the song seem more dated than it is. Yes. It's a great song. Dude, I'm all about the VHS tapes, man. As you know. I was Vaporwave before Vaporwave was a thing. I really do feel like, uh, you know, and I and I like this, and it's kind of like how I've always thought, like, um, there's not so much a compartmentalization of aesthetics anymore based on decade. It's all kind of, like, melding together now, which I think is a good thing. I think the collapse of collective mass culture is a bad thing. Oh, here's the music video. Here's a commercial for it. I don't want to get in trouble for showing Pop Jam here, so... Because that is the kind of... It's like awkward, you know, like... Okay, so I, I taped a version of it with an interview at the beginning here right after the one I just showed you ooh we got some uh, vintage Tetsuya Komuro here hopefully we don't get in trouble for this I did I had french fries <laughs> I'm still waiting on this VGA composite S video adapter to arrive I'll use it with an HDMI to VGA adapter to out do my <laughs> I'll put my PC to my VCR. Yeah, brother, I hear you, man. This is a great song here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Tetsu Komoro. This fleet of uh you know girls that he uh had sing for him. He, uh, I was eating some fries, yes. 
Tetsuya Komuro, he got girls, even though uh, he ended up looking like a middle-aged Japanese woman. But uh, more power to you. He is the uh, god of the keyboard, so... Small G, you know, there's, there's only one god, so... And he could play keyboard better than Tetsuya Komuro if he wanted to, so... I like my anime girl statuette, like, on top of the Chinese Famicom with the 132-in-1 cartridge. <laughs> and then, like, the Sega anime plushie on the glowing speaker. Makes a nice frame shot. You can see Goku on the other side of the monitor, too. And uh, there's also a framed page of X-Men behind the monitor, too. for the full Knoll experience right there. If you're curious what that little box behind the anime figure is, um, it's a composite to S, no, it's a it's a component to H, no, it's an, sorry, it's an HDMI to component 480i adapter for the Trinitron. Asian beauty standards, got that right, damn it. Not gonna lie, sometimes my OCD kind of is like, because I think Asian stuff is like tends to be better, but I also like a nice curvy girl, you know. So, I mean that does exist with Asian girls. It's just not quite as, you know, common. She's a cutie though. Well, the girl was singing on the blossom hat. So. Man, I always like how TK just kind of, how he, like, plays the guitar. He's just kind of, like, on the one hand, he's, like, really, like, cool and collected. On the other hand, he'll like, just kind of, like, get really into it, you know? I don't know if I said guitar or keyboard. It's late. I don't even know what I'm saying at this point. Just rambling and going here at least. I hope my stream doesn't get blocked in Japan, because I really like sharing this stuff with people in Japan. <laughs> kind of a shame that like Japan has such stringent copyright laws when since it's like a smaller country they don't necessarily save as much stuff you know which isn't good they go all in with having them skinny and pale as hell in Asia <laughs> uh, I don't know I mean I'm sure you could find a, a good blonde bombshell if you looked hard enough so Although they do appreciate them uh, when they when they pop over, so yeah, I have uh, Britney Spears on Hey Hey Hey, so yes, you know nothing wrong with having them big eyed and caked up. Oh look, it's Arnold carrying a uh, a car from ramen. I love this commercial. Mm -hmm. I love ramen so much. It's just like not good for you though. <laughs> it's like my wife got me a bunch of ramen 
for Christmas, and it's like, I cannot put, like, I can put, like, hardly any of the packet in there. Like, look in the back, it's like, wow, 80% of my daily sodium. <laughs> Dude, um, speaking of uh, American bombshells in Japan, um, I really, really am looking for this Cindy Crawford Pokari Sweat song, and um, I've got it on my channel, and I've, I, it's, I can hear the English lyrics, and I can't find it. It's like, it's like something when I'm all alone, I lay back and close my eyes. And uh, she's like laying on the beach, and it like it starts with this like shot of the earth, and it, like this satellite view, and it like zooms into her on the beach. And then there's also another one of her, and I think she's like on a country club, and it's really cool. And it's just like there's some like you know like Japanese commercials have such good music in them, it's, you know, especially in like the 80s, 90s, you know. And there's just some stuff that's like I can't find who the singer is. Like the worst is that Game Boy song. Which I'll never give up on that, man. I mean, I apparently just was at a mo like I, I I like I would do this kind of thing at my friend's house and it would be like one o'clock in the morning and I would just be constantly like taping me like I would just be constantly like taping the same shit on YouTube, like, over and over, just hitting the replay button on this VHS thing. <laughs> so that's why there's, like, ten of these, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger ramen and Pokari Sweat commercials, just, like, you know, back to back to back to back. Good stuff. That's right, Arnold. You keep carrying that car. And you use the uh, uh, the nutrients of, uh, you know, freeze-dried carrots and broth to give you the strength that you need. Continue carrying that car on the highway. <laughs> Arnold was, like, a lot better in the 80s and 90s. Like, anytime a celebrity grows a beard, they turn all, like, preachy and stupid. Unless they, like, are already... Unless they, like, debut with a beard, like, you know. But usually when they grow a beard, it's like... It's over, man. Like, they're not fun anymore. They just get all, like, bitchy. I'm pretty sure I've showed this tape or this stuff on this tape before, but we're watching it again. It's that damn good. Yeah, man. This is the kind of stuff you want to see at 1.20 in the morning. Eastern Standard Time. I should probably, you know, go pretty soon, but I mean, I'm, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm really afraid that a lot of this stream is going to get blocked, but, you know, I don't care. You know, it's funny, we seem to have better luck with uh, the copyright stuff when I stream this way. This guy is cool as hell. I'm 
thinking the guests for the new episode of The Knoll Show. I was talking with Santino about this. We're thinking Columbo and Taylor Swift for the guest. I've got some of the monologues sketched out in my head. And uh, I gotta figure out what for the musical guest, so. But I'll probably write the I'll probably write the Knoll show tomorrow and uh, probably film it Monday or Tuesday. Ooh, it's access. I am getting tired. I think after this song, we'll wrap it up. I think this is concert footage, so I think we'll probably be okay. But, you know, I am, I'm pretty concerned that, like, at the end of this live stream... I'm going to be faced with the decision of, do I want to clip these songs out and let my live stream be shown in Japan? Or do I want to keep it in for the benefit of my American audience? Like, I don't know. And we're at 21.1K, so that's pretty good. Slow and steady, man. Brawling our way up from the bottom here. I mean, I think the content that I do is good. <laughs> I just, it's very, very obscure. It has a very niche audience. <laughs> I mean, I, for one, really like watching monitors get taped in VHS tapes of things from, like, Japan from the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. How does your uh, how's your VCR working? This VCR works great. I've got two international VCRs in the basement that currently have tapes stuck in them. I don't know what to do, so I can't get them out. I'm friends with a guy who like repairs old stuff, but he's constantly remodeling his house. Like seriously, like you're, I'm gonna drive by there one day and he's gonna like be sitting there like with no wall in front of his living room eating soup in his boxer shorts or something <laughs> like facing the street. <laughs> oh, hey, no. <laughs> hey, Mr. Romano. Uh, are you a little cold? <laughs> no, nah, soup's warm. <laughs> You've got multiple VCRs, but you're using a silver Panasonic VHS DVD combo. That sounds good. I find that JVC really does have the best uh, stuff, you know. Mr. Romano, my friend, he always tells me, like, Sony is the consumer's choice. JVC is the professional's choice, you know. And uh, I mean, they're both really good, but my, my JVC, PVM, and this VCR DVD combo are just stellar, you know. Nothing like a good 80s guitar just wailing into the, in the moonlight, you know. Good stuff, Dice Gay. And 
built into those excited Japanese teenage girls from the mid-90s. Daisuke! Hilo! What do we got next here? I know I said I'd go to bed, but... Is that it? That Franklin the Bear. Oh, is this this really good Team Revolution song where he's like wearing a bunch of like uh, like green tropical hats and stuff? I don't know the name of this song, but I really love to find out. No, this isn't that song. I gotta go to bed. Uh, this is, I think this is the Excess song from like Code Geass or something. I can't do this. I mean, the song's like amazing, but I'm just too tired. Um, Alright, so there we have it, guys. Uh, this is gonna be our, uh, our live stream for tonight. Let's uh, go put our cap back on. And I'll pop my cell phone up here. We grab our chat, which is in the form of my Chromebook in my hand here. And uh, guys, it's been fun. Felt good to do a live stream like this. Uh, however, you know, it's just, it's hard staying up late, you know, especially with kids and a job and, you know, and I'm trying to make sure that I, you know, work out. I'm like, I'm lifting weights, I'm running, I'm, you know, I'm trying to do, uh, I, I do these, like, really good 15-minute chair work, workouts, get a lot of bang for your buck. So I'm, like, you know, I'm physically depleted, I'm exhausted a lot of the time, you know, but want to keep my live streams up, but, you know, sometimes it's hard, especially, like, these ones, because we're just, like, going, like, you know, into the night, so, but uh, it's good to have you guys, so, um, you know, John, thank you for your uh, your support, your enthusiasm, and your friendship, good good stuff um well i mean i'm probably gonna go fall asleep to um a miss cleo infomercial uh so that's good i usually just pop an earbud in and, and fall asleep just to random late night stuff from the late 20th century uh so that's always good uh you know but i'm probably gonna end up sleeping at the foot of my bed like a dog because i'm pretty sure both kids are in bed right now um so yeah all right rest well you two guys uh thank you for liking my live streams i like doing them um all right gang i'm gonna hit the hay stay tuned to the youtube channel because i'm on break and i'm gonna make sure that you guys get some quality quality content on the old comics youtube channel so take care uh tune in often and until next time guys my name is noel and i will see you in the very near future for more live streaming fun and youtube action